Hi, my name's Tom with some more ATPL tips. This is video number two of the Polar Stereographic Chart series. Polar Stereographics can be really difficult to get your head around at first. I want to try and get rid of the headache so that if one comes up in your exam, you can just absolutely smash it. In the first video, I did a real quick background on, on a bit of lightweight theory on what a polar stereographic chart actually is, what it does, what the purpose is. But now we're going to get a look at some sample exam questions. These are questions that I've taken from the various banks that exist. And where I can, I've referenced the question number in the bank. So that if you want to go back to it, you can later on. To play along at home, you're going to need a protractor. I've put a big blue arrow indicating the direction of north on mine, uh, because sometimes being square, sometimes I'd put it down on the page the wrong way around. Uh, so I put a big blue arrow on it. When I did my exams, no one at the CAA seemed to mind, so happy days. Uh, you're gonna need a pencil, and you're more than likely gonna need a rubber eraser, call it what you like. Uh, you might need a ruler, although normally I just use the side of the protractor. And key is lined paper. Accuracy is really important for the method that I'm going to show you. You can do it on plain paper, but lined paper, you know that the lines are parallel to each other. It gives you a really solid starting point. So let's get on to some questions. The first question is a fairly easy one. I'm going to use it to show you my method. Uh, it's the method that I was taught and it works every time. There are loads of different ways of, of attacking these polar stereographic questions, um, but I'm happy with this. I'm happy with this method. Um, hopefully I can convey to you that it's a good method, although I fully accept that there are other ways of, of doing things. So let's have a look at the first question. All right, the initial straight track from A, 75 degrees north, 60 degrees east, to B, 75 north, 60 west, on a polar stereographic chart is dot, dot, dot. First things first, this is the way I always set up the page. Uh, these protractors have got a grid drawn onto them, right? What I like to do is, using this margin on the side of the page, line it up with one of the grid, one of the vertical grid lines on the protractor, line one of the horizontal lines up with one of the lines on the page, and give myself just a straight line, more or less the entire length of the side of the protractor, give myself a straight line on the page. Then right in the middle, a little cross, that, that reminds me where my pole is. And I'm gonna have a look at the exam question. Are we in the Northern Hemisphere or are we in the Southern Hemisphere? We're in the Northern Hemisphere. So I'm gonna put NP, and I know that if I'm in the North, Northern Hemisphere, then west is on the left and east is on the right. Actually, the way that I remember that is because if I do, if I'm in the south pole, east is on the left, west is on the right, and it spells spew. Gross, I know, but there we are. Whatever helps you remember. Now, I'm always gonna have zero at the bottom and 180 at the top. This is the Greenwich Meridian. This is the anti-meridian. I set this up like this every time, unless of course it's a South Pole question, in which case I've got South Pole east-west, but I always have zero degrees east-west at the bottom and 180 degrees east-west at the top. It's just the way that I was taught and it works for me. So the next thing is to find out what the question's actually asking. This is a slightly complicated one because it says the initial straight track. Well, is that talking, you may remember we've got true track which is in reference to true north, and we've got grid track, which is in reference to grid north. The first thing to do maybe is to plot these uh, two points on the map, and we'll take a look, because that will give us an indication of which of these answers they're probably looking for. So point A, 75 degrees north, 60 degrees east. So I'm gonna place the center of my protractor over this pole that I've just made, and you'll notice the big blue arrow is pointing down. So I've got my protractor pointing almost the wrong way, you might think. What I've done 
The reason I've done that is because I want to go from the Greenwich Meridian and for point A, I want to go 60 degrees to the east. Well, where's the east? The east is that side. So I'm going to go from my zero, I'm going to go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 degrees. And I'm going to draw a line between that point straight back to the North Pole. So this line is now 60 degrees um, east. Before we plot the, the latitude, let's plot the longitude of point B. So this time we want 60 degrees west. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put the centre of the protractor over the North Pole with North pointing at my zero and I'm going to go 60 degrees to the right. This time I can follow the lines on my protractor. There's 60 degrees. And there's a line between them. That one is 60 degrees west. Now we want to know how far from the pole each position is. And this question is really helpful because they're both at 75 degrees north. So in order for us to be accurate, we need to make sure that wherever we plot or however far from the pole along this line we plot A, we also do the same thing at B because they're both the same distance from the pole. I hope that makes sense. The way that I will do that is, uh, again, I'll plot the protractor over the North Pole, a line, um, a line north, I'll line the arrow up with the line of 60 degrees east, and I'll just make a mark, and I'll call that A. And if I want to, I could label that 75 degrees north, 60 degrees east. Now, because I've used basically half the size of my protractor. I need to make sure I do the same thing for point B. So there we are, over the North Pole, line it up with the line, make a mark and there's B. And we'll call that 75 degrees north, seven, no, 60 degrees west. Awesome. What's a straight track? Well. On the polar stereographic chart, the straight track is a line between them, right? So I'm going to draw a line between them. Let's look at the options that we've got for answers. We've got 030, 360, 060, or 330. Well, which way are we going? Sometimes it's helpful to put a line or an arrow, feather, um, arrowheads, check marks, whatever you want to call them, on the direction of travel just to remind yourself where you're going so you don't end up going the wrong way. And let's take our protractor. Where are we? We're at A, which is this first mark that we made. So let's put the protractor over A, line it up with the North Pole. So this will give us our true heading. And if we look, the protractor is telling us that we would be flying a heading of 330 initially from point A. Now, the reason I say initially is because when we leave A, our true heading will constantly be changing. You see, as we fly along this straight track, the direction of true north, i.e. where the North Pole is, constantly changes as we go along. You see that? When we're crossing the meridian, for example, we're more or less flying directly west. By the time we get to point B, we'd more or less be flying uh, heading 210, something like that. That's not what the question is asking for, don't worry. The question is saying, what is our initial straight line track? So initially, where are we? We're over A, because that's where we're leaving. So let's line up A with the North Pole, gives us a heading of 330. Um, I'm going to pretty much bet the answer is D330. Did you get that? Let's check. Yeah, correct. Answer D. If you want this on AVEXAM, ATPL GS or ATPL questions, you'll see those numbers down in the corner. You can go to those and have a look at those. Incidentally, this question also exists going the other direction. The exact same um, coordinates, but going from B to A. 
a lot of people out there in ACPL land might use the question banks, and I'm sure you don't do this, just to learn the answers to the questions. That will trip you up, especially when it comes to this. The same question exists, but going in opposite directions. If you just learn, hypothetically, that the answer to that question is 330, when you see the same numbers, you're going to assume that that's the answer. However, on ATPL GS, no, AV exam, sorry, the same question exists, but it's obviously a different answer. Just learning the answers is a really dangerous habit. If you can understand the concept, you've got a much better chance of actually bossing this, especially when it comes to map questions. Let's move on. Okay, uh, let's take a look at another question. So question number two, a straight line from A, 75 degrees south, 120 east, to B, 75 degrees south, 160 east, is drawn on a polar stereographic chart. When passing the meridian 155 degrees east, the true track is dot, dot, dot. As always, the first thing that we want to do is set up our page accordingly. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to put a big mark down the middle of the page, more or less, lined up with the grids, lined up with the lines on the page, put a spot in the middle, call that the south pole, which means that this is east and this is west, because south pole, east, west spells spew. And what's the question asking? It's saying a straight line is drawn from 75 south 120 east to uh, 75 south 160 east. So let's draw those two positions. So just like last time, helps if I label it, just like last time, uh, protract it over the middle of the page, line it up with the arrow at the bottom, we we'll go around to 120 degrees east. East is on this half of the page. So there's 120. Uh, and I also, I'm gonna leave that there a sec because I know I'm also looking for 160, which is just there. So let's now join those both up to the South Pole. Um, both positions are at 75 degrees south, which means that I can put them, I can do just like I did in the last question, I can put the center of the protractor over the pole and use that as a reference to be able to make a mark to indicate where those positions are. So there's position A, there's position B, that's 75 degrees south, 160 echo. This one's 75 degrees south, 120 degrees echo. Perfect. Now it says a straight line is drawn between them. So let's do that. Let's draw a straight line between them. Uh, when passing the meridian 155 degrees east, what's the true track? So we also need to draw a 155 degree mark. So there's 155 degrees. Let's connect that to the South Pole. And the question is, when we're there, what's our true track? Well, which way are we going? We're going from A to B. So we're going in that direction in order to get there. So this question about true track is an interesting one. What do you refer that to? We're in the South Pole. And what is it that you know is true in the South Pole, in the Southern Hemisphere? It's that from any of these positions on the page, we know that South is that direction to where the South Pole is. So from A, South is that direction, which means that North is that direction, true North, true South. From position B, true North is that direction and true South must be that direction because that's the South Pole. And from this third position, crossing the 155 degree East Meridian, true South must be that way and true North must be that way. The question is saying, when we're passing the 155 degree east meridian, what's the true track? To help um, with the fact that the protractor is quite big and what I've got on the page is quite small at the moment, I'm going to extend this line outwards a little bit. 
Uh, and I'm also going to extend this 155 degree meridian further out as well. Now, it's asking when I'm at the 155 degree east meridian. So let's put the middle of the protractor over that. And this time, you remember that we're in the southern hemisphere, so the pole at the middle of the map is the south pole. So I'm going to indicate, I'm going to align south on my protractor with the south pole and north in the opposite direction. So there we are. So now you'll see that my uh, lines are sorted out. I come over here to the edge of the protractor, I see that the line intercepts something like the 076 degree, 077 degree true. Well, that isn't very good really, that isn't very accurate, is it? I can get away with this because if I look at the answers to the question, is it 105, is it 095, is it 075, or is it 255? Well, I'm going to go with 075. Sometimes you need to be properly accurate and you can't get away with getting close enough. This time, I think I can. I'm going to go for option C, 75 degrees, that that is a heading of 075 degrees. Let's see what the question says. Yeah. 075 degrees. I got lucky. Uh, if you want to check that one out on AVEXAM, it is question number 29102. If you want to check it out on ATPLGS, it's 124302. And if you want to check it out on ATPL questions, it's 611040. Okay, question number three. Route A to B is drawn on a polar stereographic chart with a grid aligned with the Greenwich Meridian. The true track of the straight line at A, which is 75 degrees south, 10 degrees west, is 080 degrees. What is the grid track when passing the meridian of 050 degrees east? First thing we're going to do, as always, set the page up. Uh, big old line in the middle of the page. In fact, I'm going to go slightly over to the side for this one. Big old line, we're going to put the South Pole, because with Southern Hemisphere, we're going to go East, that side, West is that side. And let's find position B. So let's go to 10 degrees West. So as ever, protractor over the middle of the page. Uh, we'll look 10 degrees into the Western Hemisphere. Uh, let's draw that meridian. Uh, and let's put position A there. We've only got one position to plot this time. Let's put it there, A, uh, and that is 75 degrees south, 010 degrees west. <laughs> Happy days. What's the question asking? Well, the next piece of information the question is giving us is that we've got a true track. Now, how do you find the true track? Well, from this position A, we know that the South Pole is in that direction. And so if the South Pole's in that direction, the North Pole must be in that direction. So we can put the position, we can position the protractor with South going that way along the meridian, North going that way along the meridian, over position A. And if we're flying a heading of 0, 8, 0 degrees, that's over there, which means that our track is that way. You can put an arrow head over there to tell you that that's the direction you're going. That's cool. The question's only given us one position and it's given us a true bearing or a true track. And it's asking us what the grid track is once we get to position or once we pass the meridian of 050 degrees east. So let's draw that 50 degree east meridian onto the page. So back over the south pole again. Uh, with the arrow pointing down, we'll find 0, 050 0 degrees there. We'll line that up, draw a line from the South Pole, and that's our 0, 050 0 degree uh, east meridian. And now that's our position that we've got to take the bearing from. So when we are in that position, just there, what's our grid track? Well, we just did a true track, which was in reference to the true thing, which is that the South Pole was behind us. 
Uh, now we've got to uh, come up with a track in reference to this fictitious overlay, uh, the grid. So what's the question telling us? Where is it? The question says that the grid is aligned with the Greenwich Meridian. Well, what does that mean? From the South Pole, we know that the Greenwich Meridian runs, all meridians run from the South Pole to the North Pole. So if that's the South Pole and this is our Greenwich Meridian, help if I labelled it, this is the Greenwich Meridian. We know then the Greenwich Meridian runs this way, which means that the grid from our new position must also run that direction too. By the way, this is where line paper really helps because it's really easy to get a line that is parallel to our initial line by lining up the, uh, the lines on the protractor with the lines on the page. Cool. So this is now grid north in this direction. That's not an arrow, it's supposed to be. Okay, so that's grid north. The question is, what is our grid track when we're here? Well, how do you find that? Well, we know that grid north is that direction. So let's take our new position. I'm going to extend this track line just a little bit further, as far as I can. So we're going to put the protractor over our new position, line it up with grid north, which is this fictitious overlay grid. Um, and we're going to read our heading. We can see 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 0, 7, 0 degrees is where our track line intercepts. So that angle there is 0, 7, 0 degrees. And so let's look at the answers that are available to us. Is it 110 grid? No. 330 degrees grid? No. 090 degrees grid? No. 0, 7, 0 degrees grid? Looks good to me. How did you get on with that one? That one on AB exam is number 47897. If you do ATPL GS, it is 110169. Couldn't find it on ATPL questions. It's probably on Bristol. If you've got Bristol, post the number uh, underneath for me. That'll be, that'll be helpful. Now's about the time that you probably want to take a break. So when you're ready for more polar stereo graphics, I'll see you in part three. In the meantime, I'd love it if you would like and subscribe. See you then.